Welcome back this week for yet another OSHA final ruling that you and your organization need to be aware of. I guess it makes sense. New week, new rule. OSHA is keeping us busy. There's absolutely no question about that. But hey, we stay busy so you can wear one less hat within your organization. That's what our consultants are there to help you with. That being said, let's dive into this new rule, beryllium. I'm not a science guy, but this element on the periodic table of elements has had scientists geeking out for years. It's a pretty coveted metal used by the aerospace, electronics, energy, telecommunication, medical, and defense industries. We won't get into all the geeky reasons why groups like NASA are all over it, but what we will discuss is the flip side of this element, and that is a substance that causes very serious lung disease, cancer, and even death. As with all good things, there's always a dark side, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. So check it. Here's what you need to know. OSHA has dramatically reduced the allowable PEL, or personal exposure limit, for beryllium. OSHA's new PELs are 0.2 micrograms of beryllium per cubic meter of air over an 8-hour time-weighted average, and 2.0 micrograms per cubic meter over only a 15-minute exposure period. And quickly, let me add that these PELs are the same for all employers covered by the standards in general industry, construction, and shipyards. The new PEL represents a tenfold decrease from the previous PEL. In other words, it was originally 2.0 over an eight hour period, and now it's 0.2. Huge difference. OSHA established a PEL of 0.2 because the agency determined that occupational exposure to beryllium at the previous PELs resulted in significant risk of developing or dying from CBD or lung cancer. In order to protect your employees, OSHA is stating that employers must use engineering and work practice controls as the primary way to keep exposures at or below the PEL. Engineering controls include using process isolation, um, ventilated enclosures or local exhaust ventilation to keep beryllium from being dispersed throughout a work area. Examples of work practices to control beryllium exposures include keeping surfaces clean by using a HEPA filtered vacuum or by wetting down dust before sweeping it up. If engineering and work practice controls cannot keep exposures at or below the PEL, employers must provide respiratory protection to affected employees. However, understand how big a deal that is when a respiratory protection program is put in place. Talk to your consultant about the ins and outs of all those many requirements. If you fall under any of the following industries or operations, please take note. Beryllium production, beryllium oxide ceramics and composites, non-ferrous foundries, secondary smelting, refining, and alloying, precision turn products, copper rolling, drawing, and extruding, fabrication of beryllium alloy products, welding, dental laboratories, abrasive blasting with slags, and coal-fired power utilities. If any of these are a part of your operations, you must attain new air sampling to determine your current personal exposure limits. This is the same process you'll follow, or that you did follow, with silica, isocyanates, respirable dust, etc. So let us know how we can help with your sampling. Finally, you must know the dates of compliance. Employers are required to comply with most of the obligations of the standards by March 12th, 2018. That's one year after the effective date of the standards. If applicable to your operations, employers must provide the required change rooms and showers beginning on March 11th, 2019, two years after the effective date of the standards. Employers are required to implement the engineering controls requirements beginning March 10th, 2020. That's three years after the effective date of the standards. So the safe control of beryllium is yet another ruling that we at Summit Safety Group have on our radar and are more than capable to assist your team with. Please reach out to us at info at summitsafetygroup.com or talk to your SSG consultant and we'll schedule a time to get out to your site. I may not know you, but I do care about you. For Summit Safety Group, I'm Jake Wolfenden and I will see you next week.